But uh, uh, today our topic will be about the building blocks. I will cover a bit at the beginning uh, about TensorFlow, which is an open source uh, library. Uh, basically, it was built by uh, Googlers, and they made it an open source. Uh, I will talk about uh, how to use your own training data, so the, the data that you already have, and how to also benefit uh, from the pre-trained models in Google. Machine learning means uh, feeding uh, this model with huge, huge amounts of data where this data has been already classified with cat or dog. And then the model all by itself will be able to detect whether this image is a cat or a dog. So, as I said, this is an example. Um, I, I want this session to be interactive. Come in, and if you have any question, do not hesitate to interrupt me at any point. Uh, we, can, uh, we can go through your questions. So, one example is that, for example, if I want to classify this image to be a cat or a dog, as I said, we can use machine learning, where we have to feed this, this model huge amounts of data with, uh, with images of cats and images of dogs equally so that this model can be able to predict uh, through uh, these different images whether it's a cat or a dog. Now, how does it go? We have a certain input layer. I don't want to put you into the details of, of uh, behind uh, the, the, the process of doing uh, machine learning, but basically what happens is that you have these different input layers, uh, these different models that are being classified, and then with activated neurons and mathematical uh, analysis, we are able to predict whether it's a cat or a dog. So, for example, if this image is inputted into our model, it will be uh, divided into different pixels. And in these pixels, we will be able to predict whether it's a cat or a dog. I will go back to the very, very, very basics of machine learning. It's a very simple example. I want to predict uh, the house sale prices uh, in a certain uh, town. So let's say, for example, I have only this this data, which is very simple, and it's not enough abadan, uh, to be able to predict and to create a machine learning model. I have, for example, uh, for 1,000 square footage, the price is 100,000, and for 3,000, I have uh, 300,000. Tayyib, if we want to predict, how much would a 2,000 square foot house sell for? How, how much would it be? So this is, this is very easy. This is, this is how, but how you got to this result, you did, an exam, you did uh, a, a linear model. You created uh, like an equation in order to predict what would be the new input and get the output. So this is basically a very simplified uh, way of explaining what is machine learning. You have to look at the data at the beginning. You have to get this huge samples of data. Now this is just a very simple example. Then you have to create this type of linear relationship or linear model. It depends as well on the case that you are trying to solve. So for sometimes it, uh, it would be good to, to solve a, a problem or a machine learning problem uh, linearly. So we have uh, inputs of numbers and then we have to get the output. Other times you would need uh, deep learning uh, machine, uh, deep learning models. Uh, now, the deep learning models, uh, we, can, we can maybe uh, go into another session because it takes a lot of, uh, of time to explain what is deep learning machine models. Uh, but basically, it, it, it means that you have different neurons, as I mentioned when, when I showed you the images. These different neurons, uh, they will run over mathematical uh, computations in order to predict whether, for example, this image is a cat or a dog. Hala, in this example, it's just numbers. We're just predicting what is the price of a house. This is where we predict. Hala, we have to revisit our data. This, this data is not enough. What would you say would be additional data that you need to have in order to predict the sale price? Location. Very good. Color. OK. Quality of the house, masalan. Year of building. Sah. Okay, so you have different, very, very different inputs. Hala, uh, you, you gave very good suggestions, but we come in with other suggestions. Masalan, the crime rate. How much is the crime rate in this region? What is the school rating? Do we have schools nearby? Do we have hospitals nearby? Are we close to, for example, a highway, or are we very far into town? So you have different inputs that you have to also uh, consider whenever you want to build your machine learning model. 
And this is where uh, it, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time for a data scientist to create the machine learning model. Now, this is where uh, we will come into two ways to leverage what is machine learning. Hello, we can either train our own model, so we can get this data. Masalan, we are trying to, to, to create a, a model that is able to predict uh, what are the prices of the houses. And in this case, uh, we are training our own model. We are getting these different inputs of data, and uh, we are classifying them. We are checking, for example, does crime rate uh, uh, make a difference or not? Uh, does, uh, for example, uh, the, the type of uh, uh, the, the income in, in this region, does it affect or not? So on and so forth. So you have more control and more flexibility when you are training your own model, when you are getting this, this data and, and you are trying to build this model. However, the cons is that it's a very steep learning curve. And it requires trial and error to get it right. So you have a lot, a lot, a lot of work to do. You have to get this training data. You have to validate this data and then keep on uh, um, feeding your model and training it in order to get uh, the, 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 the computations and the predictions right. And then you have to test your data again in, with uh, getting new inputs and uh, new data so that you are sure that this, this model is robust enough. You have to also check if it's biased or not. So for example, let's say I, I, I fed uh, my model that has to predict whether it's a cat or a dog. I fed this model with a huge number of pictures of cats and very low number of dogs. So definitely my, my model will be biased because it will predict more, uh, there will be a higher probability to predict that it's a cat rather than it's a dog when, whenever I have to feed it a new input. Another way, instead of training your own model and going into the different um, steps, and uh, we will talk a bit about TensorFlow, uh, when we want to talk about the training your own model, there's another way where you can also use our pre-trained models. So what Google offers, uh, Google, by the way, supports both and, and helps you in both. It, it helps you in training your own model by offering you, for example, TensorFlow, which is an open source. And it has huge, huge uh, uh, number of flexibilities of things, of functionalities that you can do on TensorFlow. And then you can also host this uh, TensorFlow training model on our ML engine, uh, which, is, uh, which is a managed service by Google that, helps you, that provides you with the computations, with the compute instances in order to train your model. And we also have our pre-trained models. So I'm sure you're very much familiar with, for example, uh, translation. Who here has tried translation on Google? Okay. <laughs> Who here uses uh, photos and, and has uh, facial detection and uh, beat, beato, pro, uh, yes. Okay. So all of these uh, different uh, uh, machine learning APIs, they're all integrated inside of our products. And you can also use these pre-trained models whenever you want to create your own solutions. So let's say, for example, uh, um, like the, the, the case where um, Omran has explained about uh, dialogue flow and uh, creating a chatbot. You can also create your own chatbot by using these ML APIs. So this is this this is this comes with uh, this is where it comes with the pros that you do not need any ML knowledge. You don't need to 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 train your model from the beginning. You do you don't need to get this huge amount of data and then have to classify it and um, go through the training and the testing and the validation. You can integrate them into your apps with just a few lines of code. It's very simple and I will show you in a demo. The cons, however, is that you have less control and flexibility. What do I mean by less control uh, and flexibility? So for example, uh, I'll show you later. Um, let's say I'm using the Vision API, and I'll talk about the Vision API uh, more in depth in the next few slides. So in the Vision API, if, for example, I'm a company that has uh, chairs, that sells chairs, different types of chairs, my Vision, the Vision API will not help me a lot uh, where, for example, if I feed it a chair, it will give me, okay, chair. Then I feed it another type of chair, it will also say chair. So this is where I do not have a, a lot of control and flexibility. However, Google has solved this problem by providing a new product as well, which is called AutoML. And I will talk about AutoML uh, later as well. So AutoML will come in between. AutoML will help you uh, benefit from our pre-trained models, but also uh, allow you to get your data in order to uh, predict even more specifically to what you need, in order to customize our pre-trained models. Is it clear so far? 
Yes. Okay. Anyone has a question? No. Okay. So as I said, we have two types of machine learning how to solve our machine learning problem. We either use, uh, you either use your own data to train the models, and this is where TensorFlow comes, or you, uh, and, and then uh, you will host uh, this uh, solution on a machine learning engine because it's a managed service, so you don't need to, um, uh, to, to have this pain of, of for example, uh, uh, buying servers and then spinning them up and installing all of the software. And in case one of these servers is down, then you have to replace it with a new server. All of these different uh, uh, pains that you will have uh, in order to, to, to host your TensorFlow uh, machine learning model, you will not need them when you're in the cloud. I, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with, with, uh, with the benefits of the cloud, how, how flexible it is, how it provides you with an infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. So this is an infrastructure as a service. It's, it provides you with a managed service of uh, having to host the TensorFlow on instances, and, and Google will manage the rest. It will scale. Uh, the instances uh, as, as much as you feed it with data and with computations. I will talk as well about the hardware that is found in the Cloud ML engine, which will also speed up uh, the training of your data. And on the other side, uh, our pre-trained models, as I mentioned, we have the Cloud Vision API, the Cloud Speech API, Natural Language Translation, Cloud Video Intelligence as well, and we have many others. So I didn't include all of the APIs. Yes. Yes, yes. So whole pre-trained models, um, they are APIs. So you will have to create HTTP requests to these APIs. Yes, you are right. So for example, let's say uh, you have created an application where um, you want your users to store their uh, photos on your application. You can use Cloud Vision API in order to, to, to benefit uh, uh, from this pre-trained model that we offer, that whenever a user gets to upload a photo, it will be able to classify it or to, uh, to, to, to detect the faces, uh, to detect any other uh, information that you have. And we have a huge number of documentations on every single API that you can, where you can benefit a lot from the functionalities. Yes. Are they free? No. <laughs> you have, you have a, a free uh, tier. For, so for example, you have up to 1,000 uh, requests per month, which are free. Uh, and then uh, you will have to pay, yes. But you have, you have uh, in, uh, Andak, a certain limit where you can use it for free. In, in all of the products, even, uh, even for example, not only uh, in these products in GCP, you also have uh, in other several products where you have a certain limit where it's free and then you have to pay. I think someone in the audience um, talked to me before the session. They said that they're using tensor, TensorFlow for medical, uh, 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 medical computations, or maybe she's not here anymore. Anyway. So TensorFlow is not only for machine learning, it's also for computations and creating algorithms and mathematical uh, uh, computations. So um, it's, it's an extremely powerful uh, uh, open source library. Uh, you can also do uh, different mathematical algorithms. It doesn't have to do with machine learning only. But the, the, the idea with TensorFlow is that you get to create a, 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 a graph. It's called the flow graph. And uh, it, uh, it, uh, these, the, this, this flow graph, it operates over tensors. So tensors are n-dimensional arrays. I will not go into the details of TensorFlow because uh, it, it is, uh, it's very exhaustive. There's a lot of information that you have to get over TensorFlow. But this is just an overview of what you can do when you want to train your own model. Uh, you have a flow graph where the data will flow into the computational framework, and one of the benefits of TensorFlow is that you can uh, build this model but not run it until you need to run it. Uh, so this is uh, this is where um, you get to benefit, for example, from uh, uh, from uh, storing or from uh, having to 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 configure uh, these different servers and hardwares that you need uh, before having to run uh, the the machine learning uh, model training. And what's mostly important is that you can train on CPUs, GPUs, and TPUs. So I will talk a bit about TPUs later, where TPUs is, is uh, specifically uh, found in uh, GCP. Uh, they, are, they are CPUs specific for TensorFlow. So they're called TPUs, Tensor Processing Unit. 
and they are extremely powerful because uh, if you also have uh, experience with training your models, you will know that it, is, it, it takes an extremely amount of time. And you need to have the results as fast as possible so that you are able to change your model from the beginning in case it's not giving good results. So for example, uh, uh, one, of, uh, one of the tests that we made at Google, uh, we created a, a model, a machine learning model, uh, where uh, there was a, a game with, with different balls. I will not go into the details of the game. Uh, but we, we created this machine learning model, and uh, we first tested it on CPUs. It took us about eight hours. And then on GPUs, it took us about um, five hours, and then on TPUs, it took us three hours, and then when we increased the number of instances by using ML Engine, where it scales, it took us one and a half hours. So there's an extreme reduction whenever you uh, change the hardware uh, so that you're able to get the results faster. This is one example of what TensorFlow can do. Uh, as you can see, you have, for example, this image, which has a uh, a huge amount of pixels. And then uh, we want to have a starry night type of figure of this image. Then you're able to, to create uh, the image which is uh, found at the far. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, uh, t t documentation, by the way. And I think, uh, yes, it's on GitHub. It's, it's also uh, available. Um, the thing is, is that uh, for every single pixel, you will have to c uh, do mathematical computations on every single pixel, and which, which will take a lot, a lot, a lot of time and a lot of uh, 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 processing power. So this is why you need both TensorFlow, which will ease the, the computations, and then you have the TPUs, which will speed it up. Now coming to the machine learning APIs. OK, so uh, we had one type of problem where we had to uh, train our own model. We have our own data. Now let's say, for example, I have this image classification problem. I want to classify the apples and the origins, or, or, oranges. How can I create my model so that it can detect? Color, OK. OK, well, the branch, OK. Is that, is that, if I fed it uh, <laughs> the what? Texture, okay. The branch, okay. The is a shilna the branch. Okay, it's it's really hard, ma hek. Form, but few few ni kuno bishu habad kamen. Yani iza alabniha kamen la orange hek, or iza jibna ghir nuan tefeha, kamen it will be even harder, sah? The specs? All the knot. Okay. Eh, but hala wata salit aswadu abyad saru shway if hai dik sar and the shway specs come in a pores la Sah visual ikti sabi. So this is where sorry. Come in, is a shil neha. Okay, so how 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 uh, so how will you be able to solve this problem? Is that if if it's really hard, and then you will have to get huge and huge amounts of data, and then it might also not be able to predict uh, the, this accurately. So this is where ML APIs come in place. This is where Google helps you in to to predict uh, these two different types of of fruits. So Google has huge and huge and huge amounts of information. Uh, what about a dog and a mop? Hone heine, maheg. Ma min min biola na heida kalle boni ek. Look, sah. Tab zakin heik. Okay. So machine learning is learning rules from data. You have to have huge and huge amounts of data so that you're able to predict. So Google Cloud uh, is trying as much as possible to integrate machine learning in, in all of its products. And we are constantly, constantly adding uh, these different machine learning uh, features into our products. 
So I, I already talked about Smart Reply. We have photos, we have Translate, uh, Cardboard, YouTube, uh, Drive. Uh, for example, uh, when, you, when you want to search in Drive, it's also uh, very efficient and it's based on machine learning. It will also predict, for example, what will you search for next? Uh, what's the most searched for a document that you have in, in your Drive? So on and so forth. For example, in Play, it will also provide you with recommendations. So it will know, for example, your profile. What do you like most about? Yes. Video recommendations, it's also, it's, it's also based on machine learning APIs. So for example, is a, is a anti, you're a big fan of, uh, of Marvel, of comics, you will always have these different uh, recommendations based on this. Any other question? Okay. So the machine, le machine learning APIs, they are fast, scalable, and very easy to use uh, machine learning models. They are pre-trained, so you're not, you're, you don't need to, to have any additional uh, data uh, fed into our ML APIs. Uh, we have massive data sets, and it's a work out of the box. You do not need to have any machine learning expertise at all. It's just an API call uh, to our, uh, to our uh, ML APIs. Yes? Okay, so machine learning API, we've already done everything. We've already done the pre-processing and everything. ML Okay, so Fiandak, uh, the logistic regression is part of your tra you training your own model, sah? You have your own data, masbud. You have you want to use your cloud APIs for what? For predicting the data that you have. Okay, you can always do this. So let's say, for example, uh, uh, example, uh, data you want to to classify between apples and origins, and then you want to do something else. Uh, so you have this data and you have used the vision API, you have called it and then you have classified this data and then you have these labels and then you want to use it inside of your own train model. To, to train the model, uh, uh, the, the, you, you do not need to call for the ML APIs. The ML APIs they are going to give you the end result. So for example, you want face detection, you want object detection, you want to know what's in the image, you call the vision API. You want to translate, uh, you give the text, you will get the translate. You want NLP, uh, natural language processing, you give the text, it will give you the sentiment analysis, uh, the textual analysis, so on and so forth. Pre-processing is something else. Pre-processing is where uh, you get the data, you have to clean it out, you have to filter out the data that's irrelevant, the data that is relevant, uh, you get to plot the data, you get to find the outliers, then for example, uh, you can do bucketizing, you can do several different things. This in, in this pre-processing uh, type of, of, uh, of procedure, you don't, you don't use the ML APIs. But we do support you, we do help you when it comes to pre-processing in TensorFlow. So in TensorFlow, you have these different layers. I'm talking a about TensorFlow, but uh, you can also uh, uh, check the documentation or we can have a discussion later at the end of the session. In TensorFlow, you have different layers. You can call the TensorFlow API which is the highest level. It's just a, 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 an API, you give it the training model that you have, you, you specify what is the machine learning model that you want. You want, for example, linear regressor, you want a DNN classifier, so on and so forth, or you can even combine different uh, uh, models together. Then you specify, for example, what is the accuracy, what's the, uh, the, 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 the rate of learning, uh, the learning rate, sorry, uh, so on and so forth. And then you get the results. This, this, is, this is TensorFlow. But you also have lower levels where you can also go deeper and deeper into the pre-processing, into the prepping your data and, and, and specifying different types of models. Normalization.
Exactly. You have to. You have to not only use TensorFlow. You have uh, different uh, options as well on GCP in order to pre-process the data. But yes, this is part of the pain that you have to endure. Be our section. Cons: steep learning curve and requires trial and error to get it right. You have to pre-process the data again, and you have to also pre-process the, the new input data as well, so that it matches the same one as the one that you have in your training. So this is, this is, these are the cons of training your own model. OK. So I will go over the, uh, the APIs uh, real quick just to show you what are the features that are possible in, in these different APIs. We have, for example, the Vision API. Uh, uh, you have uh, object recognition. It will, it, will, uh, it will recognize all of the objects in the image. Uh, it, it has the facial sentiment. I will show you later in the demo. Hopefully, it will work. Uh, it, will, it will tell you, for example, if uh, this person is uh, joyful, is sad, is angry. Um, it can also detect the logos. You can also extract text. So um, uh, we, we, we also have uh, automatic language identification. It will also uh, uh, identify the language that's, that's, uh, that's written. We have OCR. And uh, uh, you can also detect inappropriate content. Natural language API, uh, so this is also where it comes to entity recognition, to sentiment analysis. What is uh, this user, what is this client uh, saying about us in social media? This is mainly used when it comes to social media and to uh, getting to know what is the, the feedback of the clients. So for example, is, uh, are my clients happy or sad? Uh, do they have any certain concern? Are they having any problems in a certain service that I'm providing? We have multi-language support and syntax analysis. The speech API is the speech to text. Uh, so I think uh, you've seen like a, a little part of it uh, when uh, in, in, the, in the dialogue flow where uh, the user gets to talk and this, uh, this speech is, tr is transformed into a text so that uh, the machine is able to understand and then the text will be uh, the, the text or the result that the machine provides will be transformed again into speech so that um, for example, the Google Assistant is able to reply to you. Yes? So the ML APIs, as I mentioned in the, in the other uh, side, it, they, are, they are not flexible. You cannot specify different hyperparameters. You cannot change it. It's just an API call. You, you, you send it an input, and then you get a request. Yes. Now, the, so the speech API, you have the speech recognition, word hints. So they, they also know, for example, Google Maps, uh, the different products, not only in the products of Google, but they, they can also have different word hints and they can capitalize them. Noise robustness, so they will also filter out the noise. Uh, you get to have real-time results, as you will see next, and you have over 80 languages. I, I think it's, it's more uh, at, the, at the present moment. Uh, I think we've reached probably 100. Uh, but yeah, so the site is a bit old. Sorry? Uh, no. So, so, so all of these ML APIs, <laughs> all of these ML APIs, you have a certain limit where it's free, but then you have to pay. So it depends for every single API. Per request, yes. Okay. Uh, we also have the translation API. I'm sure you're very much familiar with translation API. You already use it, for example, on, on Google search. Uh, it translates text. It, it automatically detects the language. Uh, we always have continuous updates. And uh, there is also a premium edition, which I will not go into detail, but uh, it's also provided for enterprise companies. We have the video intelligence API. Um, so in the Video Intelligence API, it was uh, recently added. Uh, we have, uh, it, it, it's recently mo uh, moved into, into GA, into uh, general availability. So we have the label detection. 
uh, detects the labels, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, the, the, the different entities inside of a video, it can detect this is a cat, this is a dog, flower, car, so on and so forth. Uh, you can also uh, have uh, the video search, it's also part of the Video Intelligence API. You get insights from videos, so uh, what is found inside of this video, you get to uh, have even more uh, computation, uh, computation visual knowledge, and there's even more and more to come. So we're constantly adding these different features into the Video Intelligence API. You can also search. Uh, as I mentioned, in, in this video, for example, uh, red shoes, you will get the section where you, there, was a, a, there, there were red shoes in the, in the video. You can try them uh, yourself in your browser, and uh, I highly recommend it. Um, so you go to these different uh, slides, and you have a certain limit, as I mentioned, which is free. Yes. So it depends. Um, the data in the ML APIs is already at Google. No one will touch the data in, in ML APIs. You will use the data that we have in the ML APIs in order to integrate it with your uh, YouTube. Yes, you can. You can personal videos. Yes. So you can send these personal videos to our ML APIs, and then they will label them. No, <laughs> you do. <laughs> So, okay, uh, so then you will have to train your own model. Now, I will talk next about AutoML. AutoML does not have Vision Intelligence API in AutoML. I will discuss about it next, where you can get your own data and then we can classify it. Uh, we can help you to classify it. Um, but basically, ML APIs, you cannot change the data. That's found in the ML APIs. These, this data, this, da this massive data set is in Google. We are constantly training our, our models, definitely, but uh, you cannot change the, the, the data that's found in our ML APIs. Yes. Now, uh, Cloud Auto ML. Cloud Auto ML is where uh, many of you have asked this question, how can we benefit from the ML APIs, but at the same time get our own training model? This is where Cloud Auto ML comes in place. Cloud Auto ML is currently supported on translation, vision, and natural language. So what do I mean by Auto ML? As I mentioned previously, let's say, for example, I, have, uh, uh, I, I want to classify the clouds, the different types of clouds. So we have, um, uh, okay, let's, let's take another example because clouds, uh, okay, let's take pizza because we just had lunch and we had pizza. Okay. <laughs> So pizza, if I show a, a, a picture, uh, an image of a pizza to the Vision API, it will give me pizza. If I show it um, barbecue, sorry? No, I want to triangle. But if I get, for example, barbecue uh, chicken pizza, it will also give you pizza. If I get pepperoni pizza, it will also give you pizza. If I get vegetable pizza, vegetarian, sorry, pizza, it will also give you a pizza. Now, do we want to, um, to change this classification? Do we want to, for example, our, uh, our uh, model uh, to specify this pizza is pepperoni or vegetarian or so on and so forth? This is where Cloud Auto ML comes in place. So Auto ML, you get the data, you get the images of pepperoni, vegetarian, um, uh, chicken, uh, uh, barbecue, whatever, uh, you get these different images and then you feed them into AutoML, which is very simple. You feed the images with their labels and you use our Cloud Vision API, which is our pre-trained model, in order to uh, speed up the classification of these images. So next, when, after you have fed uh, your model with these different types of pizzas, your uh, model will be able to predict whether it's a pepperoni, vegetarian, or uh, barbecue chicken. Yes. Yes. So it's based on classifications currently in Cloud Vision, because classification means you will get a, 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 so you will have to classify your data, whether it's pepperoni, vegetarian, and so on and so forth. But uh, natural language and the translation, it's not classification because you're getting uh, a stream of input. 
you are, you're getting, for example, text, right? OK. So Cloud Auto ML, uh, you have, uh, it, it will help you in the data pre-processing, the ML model design, the, uh, uh, the model parameters. You can also specify them, by the way. You have a certain flexibility when it comes to the pre-processing, to specifying the parameters, to evaluating, deploying, and update. So you can also uh, get this training model and then uh, the split, uh, split your your data into training data, uh, validation data, and test data, uh, and benefit uh, from, from this information in order to train your model on Cloud AutoML. But the, the benefit of AutoML is that you already have a model in place. You already have a sort of uh, vision uh, detection, vision API in place, but you're building on top of it. This is also called, if you're familiar with it, it's called transfer learning. So, you, so we are transferring the learning that we have in the ML APIs and transferring it to you so that you are able to customize your models. Um, it's very simple. Uh, uh, you, you, it, it can be deployed within minutes. It's extremely simple. The, even if you want, you can also check it uh, later on. The dashboard is super easy. You just have to upload your data, uh, uh, label it, and then uh, you will get to train your data by yourself. So let's say, for example, we have a handbag, shoe, and hat. It w with the auto ML, it will be able to classify even in more detail, as I mentioned in the examples of chairs or of pizzas. So why cloud, uh, cloud auto ML? Uh, you have uh, limited. Uh, you, you don't need. You, you don't need to have any uh, machine learning expertise. Uh, you get to create your own custom models and benefit from our own pre-trained models. It's very simple and it's of very high quality. Now, uh, the, final, the final topic, unless you have any questions, uh, the final topic is about cloud TPUs. TPUs are CPUs, but they are tensor, uh, more of tensor-related uh, CPUs, uh, which are extremely powerful. So one TPU is 180 teraflops. What do I mean by teraflops? Teraflops is one trillion uh, computations per second. So it's extremely, extremely powerful and extremely fast, and it's only found in Google. Why do we need CPUs? As you can see, this is the ML process that we have at a glance. We have a user, we have the data, we have the objective, we want to train the model, and then we want to run it. Between the training and the running, it, it is very computationally time intensive. And, and, and when, when we say time intensive, it, it also has uh, very downfalls. Why? Yes. <laughs> uh, basically, eh, no. Mishano, I'm not sure if Fianna is a is a memnoa had to copy my barif. Saraha. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, the, hala, hene, hene they were, hene basically Google, uh, they were leading the machine learning. So we have, we have al uh, already integrated machine learning very long time ago in our products. Uh, we, um, we were the ones who also, uh, like we were one of the mains in TensorFlow. Uh, we always work on the machine learning. So I, I wouldn't be surprised uh, to have uh, the TPUs being firstly introduced in Google. Uh, but anyway, so the TPUs, the benefits of the TPUs is that it will reduce the time a lot. And why, why is time important? Can anyone tell me why is time important? Yeah. Sorry? The real-time applications. OK, what do you mean? OK, this is great. So in the run, in the run part, you want to, you want to have the results very fast. OK, next. Who can refer you Time is money. Exactly. Time is money. 
so you are you are paying as long as you are on on GCP. You're paying uh, not not only on GCP on any public cloud. Whatever you're running and hosting on the cloud, it's also it will cost you money. Second thing, which is very important as well, uh, other than Kamina Itlana, very good results and very fast results. Uh, sorry. Implementation. It can be one of the reasons, yes. Uh, anything else? Okay, so one of the reasons as well is your data. I don't want my data to be stale. I don't want my data to become old. Come in. Yani, it will take me a week to, to, uh, to build my model and to, uh, to, to train my model based on this data, and then in a week the data will change. I don't want this. I want my data to be trained and, and, uh, and part of my model as fast as possible and to always be able to update my training model as well. So cloud CPUs, uh, they help to train and run cutting edge machine learning models very, at very fast speeds. Um, uh, you, uh, you can reduce the cost, as I mentioned, the cost of machine learning work and speed uh, uh, uptime to market for new AI applications as you mentioned. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, uh, TPUs are really good for both um, training and inference, uh, as, as we mentioned, and they can dramatically shorten the ML development times from days to hours. Uh, 